I'll address the quality control issue. Uh, here's what happened. Uh, it was a minor adjustment to this little station. It was not a huge project, but we needed a construction manager out there watching. Uh, secondly, what happened was we did not realize they were making that adjustment. We did not know they were out there. How we found out they were about that is when we look back in the logs from the company and they showed this going out. So at that point in time, we didn't know they were making that adjustment to after all of this happened. So there was no way we could go out there and check something they did because they made an adjustment on their own based on them in, you know, continuing to implement the state system. So that's with that. Uh, we have SOPs um, that they that we follow as well. Uh, but like I said, we were not aware that this gentleman, this third party contractor, was making that adjustment. Day one, he had said, we're not hiding behind that contract. It's our responsibility. We take it 100% and we don't take it lightly whatsoever. So, uh, anybody that thinks other than that, uh, it is absolutely not true. It's a little frustration. We're equally as frustrated with it. As I said, zero tolerance for school. Do we keep having them? Absolutely. Regardless of the
was the supervisory control and data acquisition, which is that <coughs> very process that you're talking about that would give you advance notice of any of any event at the at the lift station. So, uh, yeah, what's being put in place? An advanced data system is being put in place at that station and at the, every other lift station in the city. In fact, in fact. You know, uh, part of that system is already up and running, and we have calls coming in now. So, in the event that something similar to that happens again, we will get <coughs> advanced information that there is a failure at that particular station or any station that's in the city of Augusta. So, what that does? So, first of all, site entry. When that person opened the gate to go into that site, it would have called us and said. Someone's at your site, you need to take a look. That would have been thing one. Thing two, when they disconnected the cable and it went into a non communication of the wet well condition, that would have been alarm number two. I don't know how much water's in the wet well. You need to, you need to, uh, need to get somebody out here. Third backup, it would have went into backup mode saying, I can't control. Uh, I can't control this station as I normally do. I'm going into default mode, which is just to run the pumps off of the ball flow system until someone tells me to do something differently. So those three things would have been given, those three notifications would have come out to our technical folks to get them on the way to the site immediately. The, the moment that guy opened the door, we would have got an alarm and we would have started getting that direction. I have a question. I got, I got a question. Well, you go first. <laughs> uh, does your standard operating procedure require visual inspection of manholes in this station daily, uh, especially ones in remote areas, or that uh, if they overflow, go into a creek or a river? No. And, and if not, why? Well, manholes, we have 5,000 plus manholes, 4,000. Four to five thousand plus manholes, so we can't we can't uh, we can't inspect them all. Well, now, yeah, I, think means, I, would, I think he means a list station. I, I mean, I mean anything that could only flow into a creek or a river, especially a remote one. Obviously, this one was because nobody saw a flashing light. Yeah. Uh, so well, uh, I know there's guys riding around this city in white trucks all day long. Yeah. And it doesn't take long to go down the street and say, okay, everything. Uh, no overflows here. Yeah, yeah. As far as manholes, you know, we have several thousand. I don't want to say five. We have several thousand manholes, so it's unlikely that we're going to have someone in at all those locations in the course of a day or a week. However, however, <laughs> well, however, what we have deployed are uh, some manhole monitoring sensors that are being. I think we have a few of them in places. This this week or last week they were installed at some of our critical locations where we know that there's a potential for an overflow. You know, we've had one there before. So we've started to put equipment in those manholes that does notify us when it starts to see the level in the manhole level. So we are getting there. We're not there yet. But as far as lift stations, our SOPs do include visual inspection which is what the gentleman <coughs> that Wednesday morning should have done, and we would have caught it much sooner. Da daily inspection? Not daily. Mm -hmm. the, the, the maybe every well, other day. Well, daily. Depends on the, it depends on, because they work in shifts, so it's well, mostly well, by shift. Maybe you should update it well, daily. Well, it's by shift, so that would be twice a day. Somebody look at it when they want to change switch to shift. So you're saying it's twice a day that the SOP yeah. requires it? And so how did it get by all four days? Let me just say this on clear. It's not all of our lift stations. It's the larger ones like Reamer and the Gorto Road. We, those are the ones that are the largest yeah. ones. So you're so saying it went eight shifts without anybody so noticing it? that next morning. It went to that next morning. Without, four days. Uh, We're still talking after the Lord is here. In the very beginning of your presentation, you made a comment about the two types of events. This kind of event, and then there's this kind of event. And because there was, I can't remember the words you used, I'm mm -hmm. old, so I still have an every ball and, and, and perfect recall. But it, because it was this kind of event, it didn't require 
some kind of community uh, double check or whatever it was. So I'd like you to repeat that again because I missed that part. Yeah. What was the word he used? Higher, lower. Are you talking about the charts, maybe? The two types of events, you said. The two types of events. I don't recall that. I know I was talking about two different levels. Yeah. That there is a level that we normally get at the treatment plant and what we actually receive. And the difference between those two levels is what we report to people. Yeah. Were you talking about? Routine maintenance on the, on the thing that the company just initiated without telling us. Yes. Before that, about yeah, it. and he, he had a name for that versus this kind of thing. Did they have a report that they were going through the maintenance when you were talking about that part? Okay. Yeah. I um, still have a question. He's trying to answer this. Okay. So, yeah, uh, typically when they were allowed to do some maintenance on our site, they were required to inform some of our technicians, our supervisors that they had a technician going out to the site <coughs> and we would get someone to the site and we would inspect the work and make sure that everything was, was going correctly. It was the end of the day and the gentleman wanted to make another adjustment. He knew it was going to take five minutes. So he said, okay, I'm just gonna run in here real quick and do this. And he did not notify the city that he was going into the site. He went into the site, made the adjustment and left. Okay. But I think what, what I thought you had said was because it was this type of uh, action that they were performing, that they didn't have to. And, and maybe I misheard. Yeah, it's, well, it was a minor. It was a minor. minor. Right. It was That's a minor. Right. I think that had to do with having an inspector on site. Now, we could have had somebody there. I think that's what it was. That's exactly it. Right. But the, that, that wasn't, the, the point was we would have had an inspector there and if we had known him, he was going to do that, we would have had somebody from our staff there with him, regardless if it was major or minor. But I think because it was minor, the point I was trying to make was that, I think perhaps that's why the gentleman went on in there. That, that is not how the procedure is. I mean, we should have been notified, as the girl said, and then we will send the staff member to meet that person. It was an easy fix for that. Check. Very easy fix for that. Check. Don't allow anybody in without county keys or city keys. Well, either. they've been working on it, so I think been out there, so I think the guy was comfortable about to make that final adjustment and felt, yeah, I get in there for five minutes, I got it, and so, but no, that is, that is not, major or minor, major or minor, we should have, they, they should have known. Sure, access without your notification. Right. I got a quick question for you. When you were talking earlier about this bill, you were, everybody's talking about this specific <coughs> bill right now, this is not the first time we've had sewage in the Mississippi River, I for one are tired of buying bottled water and gallons of water for the last two years because I can't brush my teeth with water now, can't cook with it, can't make coffee with it, can't make tea with it. My animals have to drink it, my dogs, my horses. It's not fit for me to drink, but my animals have to drink it. You had said earlier about this bill, but you had mentioned about rain bottle. And it kind of, the way I caught it, the way you said it was, well, we got a lot of rainfall, we're going to get sewer in the river. Why uh, is the sewer plant set up to where that's going to happen? I think Mr. Davis made that comment, not me, because I can tell you, if, if, if from the other pool of meetings we've shown, hydro events that Mr. Davis spoke of, our new equipment has handled that. It, we can't have this with the hurricane, the heavy rains from the hurricanes, the last two years we've had this equipment. We have not had a spill like that from the equipment malfunction. So abs absolutely, Any spills I at all? can't agree with you on that uh, because what we've done will take care of that. It's been a big one in December. Take care of that. Now, yeah. last December absolutely we had 16 inches of rain. <coughs> and the, the new plant almost, I mean, it maxed the past capacity. It just couldn't hold it on. So it did discharge when we had 16 inches of rain. I've, but, I've got a question for this gentleman here. He's been waiting for a while to answer this question. I'd like to well, let me finish with him and I'll go to him. Thank you. Yes, sir. Keep going. Like I said, I just, I was going to try to find out uh, no, if there's going to be an end result to this, but I might have to take stock of Walmart where I buy my water out. <laughs> I, I understand. I understand, just sir. But here's the deal. Uh, Mr. Davis kind of alluded to it. And there were the SCADA system that's going to, that, that was, that was purchased to prevent what happened. 
at the end of December, it's ironic that it made it happen because that's what we're trying to do. Since we've had the majority of the SCADA system in, uh, we've reduced our inflow and in infiltration by 25% minimum, which means what we're doing now is a combination. It's just not the SCADA system that's going to help us identify how we're going to use that technology. We're now <coughs> identifying how stormwater is getting into our sewer pipes which is all that water goes to the treatment plant. And we're, so we're not trying to treat the sewer. We got all the stormwater from the streets, and then that's what causes that problem. So, so we're double dosing on that with the technology and um, the, the, uh, the finding of inflow and infiltration that we've had in the past as technology to do. Thirdly, what we're doing, uh, just as a safe measure, we're building another 2 million gallon basin at Wickham Future. Uh, that make it sure it Speaking of, we finally got EPP permitting. Uh, two weeks to begin that process. Um, so hopefully we'll be done with that considerably through that process before the, before the rainy season gets here. So that's the difference with the water energy. Yes, John. Okay, I'm just going to batch up several so I don't take up a lot of time. The big one is, how do you get a copy of your SOP? And for that matter, why don't you publish it on your website? That's a big one. The second is, where in this SOP does it say, what was the procedure for checking to see if the employees had done their job correctly in checking at the pump station. From what you're saying, I, I haven't heard that there was one. Another question is, in that SOP, where does it say you're supposed to put signs out? Related to that, did you put a sign at Bay Tree Road Bridge, which is the first bridge below the leak site? No, I can tell you that now, Mr. Corbin, because EPD requires it to be accessibility, and that Bay Tree Bridge is not accessible to the public. Sure, Borento uh, is highly accessible to the public, behind the salty snapper where there's not a bridge, but we know folks are back there on the four wheels and thing, and even a sign back there where, where the two rivers can join, and then at the ramp of 131. How about so that's, why, that's why we didn't go in Bay Tree. How about Bland Park, which is halfway in between Bay Tree and Gorinto? What I'm going to tell you tonight, we, we, can take this, we can take this up with a letter there. I don't want to spend all the time with the signs because you've been through that before with EPD. We followed every protocol of EPD uh, required us to do. <laughs> Uh, but I'd be happy to take that up. We're always willing to, to look at other things we can do and expand where we put signs. But Did you put a field, sign? Still, to ask your question, we follow the protocol we're supposed to follow. Okay, well, I, then how do we get a copy of that protocol? APD, you're very familiar with them. Go to George EPD. We have to go to EPD to get the protocol for, that the Valdosta City is using. When we, yes, because we have to answer. They're the regulatory agency for the state of Georgia. We have to answer to them. We, we, we have I think the point is we're, we're citizens here and we want you to do more than just what the state tells you. And we want you to do things yes, for sir. us. You work for us, right? And I'm, and I'm, and we're, like you said, we're so not don't just go by what the state tells you. Do what you wanted, what we want you to do for as citizens of, of this community, okay? And he's a citizen of this community. He's saying we want the sign where we need to see them. Absolutely. We don't want them just where the regulation says they have to be. I have to disagree with that whatsoever. I followed up with Mr. Porter and by saying we were certainly looking at expanding that as we do. I mean, as, uh, with this bill, we followed the protocol. We well, that's what I'm saying. That's all you did. You did not do what we want, what we need. You I'm followed the protocol. I'm writing down additional signs. I have yeah, we see the right, right. right. Speaking That's exactly what I just said to you, and you, you, you told me right back. Well, yeah. that's all I want to do is follow the protocol. I just do what the government tells me. Tell that we're going to add signs, I promise. Okay. And so, as a result of this meeting, will there be a list of actions and then the follow through on that at a later date? Yeah, because I get it. It'll take minutes right now. Okay. You've heard some of them. I catch base and thrills me. And I up that, like, that's, okay. ten, that's a 10 million gallon catch base and that is overkill. And it I'm is. thrilled about it. What that. doesn't thrill me is the whole, I'm still stuck on because that's what I do for a living. Documentation. Because again, I I am concerned that at the end of the day you can throw up I can love the dots and throw some money at this. But if you don't have these folks trained, and if you don't have training and people and retraining yearly, and if you don't have the right stuff in your procedures, you're just gonna have another problem again and again. And I'd like to take the time to, to show you something it's kind of interesting. I lived, I moved here to Hamilton County four years ago. And I want to show you my legs. 
One flag started taking showers in the well system off the Wipaluchi River. That's my life. I didn't have a spot on them until I moved to Hamilton County. And I, I live now closer. I live two blocks from the Wipaluchi today. And before I moved to where I am today, I lived four blocks. Now, my, and I know, I have, this is one neighbor that, Jean, he just finds bottled water. I have another neighbor, Ace Smith, who lives on 44th. He's on a fixed income, and he's going and getting distilled water. He takes showers in distilled water. He doesn't use his well water to take showers. Now, that's just two that live a half a mile from me. How many more people do we have that are fixed incomes in that basin within two, three, four blocks of the Wipaduchi that, that are having this problem? Can we move forward? Any other questions? Ms. Parker, if I Yes. Uh, at our meeting today, unfortunately, it came to light and found out that uh, our Florida Health Department and DEP has been alternating daily water testing along the Wicca River. And um, as of the test that was pulled the 6th January, the 6th of January, at the uh, Valdosta Highway, um, I don't know, Madison Valdosta Highway 31, 445, um, had an extremely high level of coliform in the coli. And it, and then today's results came back. Uh, we just got those results from yesterday's testing at 150 at the Belleville Bridge. Apparently the flow or some of the flow has reached dangerous levels there. Um, we have, like I said before, Madison County, Hamilton County, this year's local space for emergencies. We're fixing to probably have a special call meeting to extend hours again and uh, in the next few days but we've had this will be our third health advisory of this field that, that our Florida Department of Health and DEP has issued to Florida on the Rift Future River. <coughs> I'm assuming that they will probably have a health advisory issue tonight. Yeah the health the, I, I was just texting the health department and they said there's going to be another advisory come out tonight because of what they found Monday and what and, and Tuesday. So this this is an unusual event because normally within a day or two it comes to us and and uh, it's over with but this isn't that way. It's coming in slow and and you know, so for almost a month now uh, we're having to issue these advisories to stay out of the river. So on January the sixth the DEP data <coughs> was for E. coli 7,776 parts per, per 100 milliliters, and it was at 4,500 for coliform. Safe levels in Florida, I don't know how to answer Georgia, I believe there's anything above 400 for coliform, about 400, and 800 for E. coli. And uh, today at 150, the results was 20, 2,700 at 150 today, <coughs> which is uh, about a third of <coughs> that 31 that we have on the six. So we, we're, we're concerned about with this, the way the water flow is in the river right now. It's just very, as you know, the river's low, you know, very little flow going on. Some of our concerns is a lot of this material may even be trapped in some of the 